Hello, my name is Cricket. I'm the owner of pegstilts.com and today I'm going to show you how to put these on. The first thing you want to know is you always want to wear knee pads. Knee pads keep you safe and that's where you're going to be training yourself to fall down. You always want to choose the ones with the plastic on the outside so that if you hit root, gravel or rocks, sidewalk curbs, something like that, that your knees are protected and you can still walk the next day. So, with that, we'll pop up on top of here and we'll get started. So, some knee pads have a Velcro, uh, have Velcro straps and a Velcro sleeve. These particular ones that I'm putting on right now just have a Velcro strap. I generally find that using just the Velcro strap is sufficient for me on my stilts. If I'm practicing acrobatics or if I know that I'm going to be crawling around on the ground a lot, I might want to put my legs through the sleeve. However, if you use the sleeve, it causes some problems. One, is that you got to take your shoe off. Two, is that your pants sometimes get bunched up in the sides, inside of the pocket. Here, you get a little bit more leeway with where your pants and your seams are. So, I find that using the Velcro straps are sufficient, unless you were to find that your knee pads don't fit you correctly. You want to open up your stilts, and you want to open up all of the straps. Completely open them up. And rest your stilts next to you where they're not going to fall over. If they fall over, then you got to get down. And if you've already got one on, then it can be awkward. So, try to think ahead. So, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the wood is on the outside of your leg. When you're looking at your stilt, this happens to be an adult set. When you're looking at your stilt, you can see that the toe end is a little bit longer than the heel end. The foot plates on the adult sets and the kids' sizes are slightly different. That's a little bit so that I can see in my stock which ones are which and keep track of them. Um, it keeps me from having to do a whole bunch of extra marks. But you want the wood on the outside. Then you want to place the foot all the way on the stilt. And you want to line the front edge of the shin, just above the tongue of the shoe, up with the front edge of the wood. And go ahead and get your leg in there nice and straight and set yourself up so that the bar is lined up with the bones in the side of your leg. I like to attach the foot strap first. I just run it through one side of the slide. I pull the strap really tight and I Velcro it back to itself. But then, while I'm up here, I might as well go ahead and attach the other one to my leg as well. I wanna make sure that whatever I'm sitting on is nice and solid so that it doesn't fall over and I don't fall off of it. And again, I want to line the front edge of my shin up with the wood, hold the strap tight, and run the Velcro over my foot. Now, I want to do the knee strap. I like to do the knee strap second so that then I feel totally integrated with my stilts. Now, on my website, you notice that I have kid sizes and I have adult sizes. This is actually a really great uh, way to be able to explain why it is that this happens. So when you have your knee pad on, you want the foam and the strap to be able to go either on the outside of the knee, knee, uh, the knee pad or you want to have this be below the knee pad depending on your height and the length of, of your leg. So um, that's why there's a differentiation between the size of kids and the size of adults. Um, otherwise, if the foam pad and the knee strap are too high up the leg, then you can't bend your knees, which means you fall over like a tree, and that is not the fun part. So, you want to go ahead and get yourself all lined in there. Now, I didn't say it when I was doing it, I probably should have, but when I'm pulling the knee strap tight, I want to pull the bar back towards me so that as I'm strapping it, it doesn't start working its way around the front of my leg. I'm still lined up, I double check everything, and then the last strap is the ankle strap. Now, I made the, the foot strap and the knee strap as tight as I could get them. The ankle strap, I don't want those to be too tight. If I have the ankle strap too, too tight, then it makes me feel like my feet are walking, like I'm walking on the sides of my feet or that I am pigeon-toed. So, you want to go ahead and get your feet placed on there. If you need to make any additional adjustments, once you've got everything locked in, go ahead and do that. And then put two hands on your surface, whatever it is, or grab hold of your spotter and 
stand up. Now, if you feel like you're falling forward a lot and you're walking a lot in your heels, once you get up here, what you want to do is feel feel if you feel like you're in the center of your body. If you don't feel like you're in the center of your body while you're standing, then you want to sit back down and you just want to make a slight adjustment with your foot. I'm going to slide my foot back just a little bit and see how that feels. Now this adjustment that I'm making is really, really minute. It's like an eighth of an inch. If, it, if you do too much, then it doesn't feel quite right. There we go. And then stand up, see how it feels this time. You should be able to stand straight up and you should be able to walk. If it feels weird in your legs, there's probably something with the feet that needs to be adjusted or it's possible that the knee straps are not tight enough. You want the knee straps and the foot straps to be as tight as possible and you want to stand up straight and see where it feels in your body. Some people balance a lot in the front of their body, some people balance a lot in the back of their body and depending on where they balance in their body it's kind of hard to figure it out until they get up on the stilts. You just need to make a slight slight adjustment down at the feet. If you notice their feet are sliding around a lot, try to get them into the place where it feels like they want to be and tighten them down there. I do sell an extra add-on product for some customers if they, if they decide that they need them. Um, I, I have a shoe friction kit, basically. Uh, it's really easy to make at home from, from scrap items that, you're, that you might even have in your own garage. Um, basically, you just need a, a piece of yoga mat and you need some sandpaper that has adhesive on the back. And you can put this adhesive sandpaper right on the foot plate of the stilts, and then you can put, you can cut out a rectangle of foam from the yoga mat, cut two little slices in it, and then run it through on the strap of the stilt. And then you'll still be able to close the strap and use the Velcro, and the yoga mat will sandwich between the laces and the strap, and it'll give you just that little bit extra friction. Some people that are using that are using these stilts for workshops uh, find that that the, that is extra um, makes the stilts extra secure and, and really helps out their students. So um, I've added that in as a product that I carry instead of just telling people how to do it. Um, so if you feel like you need that, it's called the Shoe Friction Kit, um, and you can find it at pipestilts.com in our web store. Um, that's all I need to say for now. Up I go. And oh, just one little view of my shoes and my feet on the stilts. There we go. That's what it looks like from this angle.